and yeah. it wakes everybody up. Yeah. The skipper's yeah. happy because he knows it's working, yeah. but everybody else is woken up at three o'clock. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. all right, fair enough. fair enough, fair enough. been right up in the bow there over the last few days. I'm just about done being cramped in that little crash locker, so. G'day guys, I'm Ross, I'm a boat builder from Australia. Three years ago, I bought a mould for a 40 foot liverboard catamaran, and I'm on a mission to build this. Not exactly this, but this. Building a 40 foot liverboard catamaran from foam core composite materials. If you like my channel, please subscribe and uh, let's get into it. Morning guys, it's uh, cooling off and I'm really enjoying it. I have to say it's only a 20 during the day at the moment and about five or six at night. So it's really, you know, I mean my tent is just calmed down so I'm pretty bloody happy. I've been right up in the bow there over the last few days. I'm just about done being cramped in that little crash locker. So it'll be a good thing to get that thing done today, get the angles uh, glued in and then I'll be able to move on. The fitting of these angles requires quite a lot of notching and cutting and, and basically close to the uh, the hole cutting so you've got to be a little bit careful but once you get them fitted in place and actually notched into the top of the bulkheads I'm, I'm then able to epoxy them in place and, uh, and look it's just been an amazing solution and, and one of the best things I could ever recommend to anyone tackling a boat is to either make these up uh, or purchase them as I have pretty made. Um, they are just fabulous things and, and create such a strong structure. In fact, there is a data sheet on them showing that uh, the failure is often the adhesive, not in the physical angle itself if there is a, a, a sheer failure or a strength failure in them. So that's why I've chosen to use them and it will save miles of work. So I've been struggling with trying to hold this in place, this um, ledge for the crash bulkhead. So what I've resorted to doing is putting in some tiny little self-tappers. There's about five of them along here and they're holding them on just in time for the uh, epoxy to go off. But I then have to go and refill them with epoxy. You don't want any water ingressing in there. And uh, from this, this ledge down is going to be whited out with flow coat. But I do need to make sure that it is sealed entirely. Uh, as it is an airtight uh, seal and I'm also considering uh, putting a pipe down in the bottom here that runs down into the bilge down here through this limber hole and there'll be a, a ball valve or a tap here so I can access the, um, the any moisture that may build up inside that crash bulkhead but yeah that's actually worked really well it, it's not dead level um, but that's not going to matter because there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of filler going underneath the crush bulkhead that's going to sit on there and then it'll be uh, bogged with the foam bedding compound and then radius and then tabbed as well. So there's plenty of sealing going on there and it's going to add a tremendous amount of structure right up into that bow. Well, that took a bit longer than uh, anticipated, but you know, that seems a bit the way it is. But what I've done is I've actually uh, put some self-tappers just into the... Uh, the internal foam they're only talking about little five mil ones but they're gonna have to be filled because I don't want any water being able to get into that foam core on the hull sides um, I've now wedged it out and I've already put the brackets in here so pretty much this is done I need to tidy up up the front here I'm gonna tie these pieces back together and put in a, a false plate underneath and glue that to the uh, to the end of the of the hull there and then uh, pretty much that that chamber is now done. I'll clean it out, give it another really light sand, and uh, essentially I can go for it with the flow coat now. Great thing also is I'm gonna be able to stand here and fill it in this wing frame. So that's gonna be so nice to be able to stand up high rather than wedge down in that bloody hole while I fill it this in, because I don't wanna be uh, doing this until I can sit on that. And I'm gonna be able to do that as of tomorrow. So I was always worried about how I was going to seal the underside of a crash bulkhead. It's technically an airtight chamber, uh, or watertight chamber. Um, these angles have answered that. I basically have already put them in. They're as strong as tabbing. And then simply I'm gonna put this lid on top 
fair it and bog it around the outside of the radius and then just tap it in place and the job is done. It, it's about a half hour job. There's no trying to get inside with a brush, trying to put uh, cloth tabbing. These, these angles are just the absolute winner and answer for anyone trying to tab under a floor. Um, I'm even considering using it on all my bulkheads. I'd love to take a photo of the tripod positioning that uh, that goes on here because I've got like one leg long and other two up on the chamfer panel. Sometimes I've got one leg and half a leg and then something propping underneath. Um, you, you know, the challenges of actually filming this is harder than building a bloody boat. <laughs> So I'm starting to consider our plumbing and I'm very lucky to have had Scott Bailey to come down here from RWB Marine and spend the morning with me running through my plumbing systems. He's very illuminating and incredibly knowledgeable on this subject and uh, and is the local Jabsco rep. Yeah, I, I understand that. That's a lot of plumbing. As I say, in the US now, all this goes straight into the tank. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're going to have to pump the tank out somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why not concentrate? how we pump the tank into one spot and not worry about how we pump the sink out how we pump the yeah, clothes yeah, wash yeah. out how we pump the toilet out yeah, how understand we pump the shower yes, out yes you know? yes yeah yeah let's sure let's pump the tank out just like a house where yeah. it all runs into yeah. one sewer yep. and I think in the long run and that's what they put on here that's the macerator style pump so that's the one that pumps it out out right and, yeah and that sucks it up and you said why can't we use that because that's got a pickup all the way down yeah all the way to the bottom and which my tanks are perfect for are yep. surface mounted they yes just, plop into the tank yep Don't, yep yeah. easy so that's an easy plumb what were you saying about the water drumming in the middle of the night there scott yeah because yeah in the middle of the night people get up and they turn the water pump on yeah, yeah. they're always noisy they drum yep yep and yeah they and yep. it wakes everybody up the yep. skipper's yep. happy because he knows it's working <laughs> yeah but everybody else is woken up at three o'clock yeah yeah morning. okay they're all right happy. fair <laughs> enough fair enough so what we're trying to establish here yeah. is where i put my water pumps now scott's just highlighted the fact that there's a lot of noise involved in uh, in water pumps and if someone gets up to go to the loo or to whatever the skipper's very happy because he knows someone's using the water but hopefully not too much water yeah. we're trying to work out whether i put my pumps there or in that wardrobe over there. Now we've just ascertained that all the pipes are gonna go from here up to that forward head there. So I think that's probably the best place, don't you reckon? Mm -hmm. On the same, keep everything on the same side. Yes, and accessible. Um, because of the use of water pumps, yeah. they're probably mainly, except for maybe your main engines, more used than anything else in the boat. Yeah, yeah. And enough. so yeah. at some stage, you're gonna to have to maintain them, you're gonna to have to replace them. Yeah, yeah. You want quick, easy connections. Yep. Uh, you're using the, the plug-in plumbing, yeah, you'll yeah. use uh, easy wiring connections. Yeah, and, sure. Yeah, yeah, as we discussed earlier, yeah. you'll probably have two, maybe. Yep, yep. You know, yep. it's a good idea these days on both this side to have double redundancies here. So two water pumps? Because... There or, or one on well, each side? Well, one on the other side. No, well, I'm going to have two separate pumps here. And then you have a, a, a 
a system in the middle that you can turn yeah. a valve and actually supply the other yeah, side. Yeah, okay. Makes Mainly sense. because, again, we talked about the balance on catamaran, so the water. Yeah, yeah what, we want to be able to equalize it. Yeah. If you're, Same with fuel, I guess. If you're showering on this side all the yeah, time, yeah, yeah. you're using this water all the time. Yeah. Uh, five five liters of water is five kilos. Yeah, it's, it's correct. It's wrong all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, you makes know. sense. Makes so either sense. you have to use a ballast system yep. or you'll have to Transfer. use the other side of the wall yeah. for a while. Use yeah. the other side, yeah, that's right. Oh, it's been a very complicated morning. We've had a couple of hours of this and we're nutting stuff out. And yeah. the other thing we've come up with is down in the head down here, and I'll show you a photo of it, there's actually a sump and we're going to run the washing machine, the sink and the shower all the way into, a, into one sump with a bilge pump that's then going to pump it along here to my black water tank, which is right here, black and gray water tank, all in the one system, just like a house where we keep all our plumbing together into one spot and simplify the whole thing with a wire valve so that if we're out to sea, we can flush the whole lot out to sea. Is that correct, Scott? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right, that's yeah. exactly what we're getting at, isn't it? Simply, simplicity. Simple, yeah, yeah, simple is easy. Maintenance is what we're worried about. Yeah. How we maintain yep. this at sea or in port. Yep. How easy is it to get to yeah. and, and satisfy all the environmental laws. And, and Excellent. Oh, that's yeah. what I want to hear. That's what yeah. your viewers want to hear, mate. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> we want to be doing the right it's thing. It's the right thing. Yeah, it is the right, it's thing, the right thing to do. Thing because it's good for everybody. You know? Yeah. And it's yeah. easy maintenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, things go wrong when people, people don't maintain their boats. Yes. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. That's totally get yeah. that. Totally get that. Yeah. Because we'll, we'll, we'll eliminate the idea of taking it across. That's not going to happen. Well, no, you've got a shower there, don't you? You want hot water in your shower? No, it's separate. Oh, it hot is. Hot water's got another one. Oh, you've got a separate hot water? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put in two. I'll put one in each so, side. That answers my question. Okay. You're going to buy two pumps. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy two pumps. Yeah. So, more pressure. So, this one I'm going to need an accumulator pump. And accumulate okay. a tank. What I would do, Ross, number one, yeah. build your system without it. Yeah. Because it's a clip on. Yeah, okay. okay. If just, all just of a sudden you don't like it, yeah. go work. buy the accumulator okay. and stick it in. The idea of the accumulator is to stop the lag. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. It stops that drop. It stops the pump going. Yeah. yeah okay. Hitting right. full pressure and okay. then dropping too low. That makes sense. And you yeah. might need it on that system for the clothes wash. Yeah, the clothes You might not care over here. Yeah, okay. So. If you turn both those toilets on at the same time, you can be pulling up to 50 amps. Wow, that's considerable. Yeah, yeah. 25 amps. So, okay. if you're turning the toilet on and it's flushing, yeah. it doesn't, by the way. Yeah. But if you turn the tap on and you run that pump yeah. and the toilet at the same time, that's up to 45 amps yeah. at, at one hit, that's at one big. That's a lot down a, a long So, way. yeah, so, and your Sparky will understand that all of a sudden. But yeah, start pointing these amperages out. Yeah, yeah, we will. So, you need a 3D amp. Um, switch on that toilet. Yeah, okay. no, not the fuse, but you know, uh, circuit breakers. Yeah, circuit yeah. breakers. Yeah. Well, he's, gonna, he's basically you can't come in. We're going to start like I'm doing yeah. with you. Yeah. We're going to do the whole thing in yeah. in situ as it is now, so yeah. we can start from scratch. Yeah. Because he said, "Is it already built?" And I said, "No, it's not. No. This is at the stage where sort of you want to be involved." Yeah. So yeah. that's your fresh water. Oh, that's your toilet. That's yeah. your deck wash. So the bilge pumps. Bilge pumps. Again, I. Uh, I know a little old fashioned in that, and because it's not the ideal conditions here, is never. it? Never. So, in my case, my oil is only ever going to be in that engine model. Yeah. There's never going to be oil down there unless someone spills it deliberately no. down in there. So. Right. And if you spill oil, a newspaper works really well. Yeah. Or the, you know, that we sell them, the yeah. pads, it's any of those, all that. That's better than trying to actually pump it over yeah. Because you can just put it into a garbage bag and throw it away. Yeah, correct. And it works better. Yeah, yeah, so it's a better it. system, it's legal. Just a huge thank you to the team at RWB Marine. I mean, they've been absolutely brilliant. I ran into them at the boat show a couple of days ago, and, and even all of the staff, you know, they, they know this stuff better than anyone that I've ever met. Um, Scott's actually a very experienced boat owner and has obviously been in the building training for quite some time, giving me some great advice and really sold my solution. So thank you very much, buddy, and I'll see you next time. So I've just come down to do the template for my um port water tank and i thought i'd use the other half of the piece i cut out last time um, for the starboard tank it's about two centimeters too short so i've got to use a complete sheet which is in, and i mean if they made these foam sheets 2.4 um, meters long rather than 2.2 i would have been good on two centimeters out it's just a bit frustrating when these things aren't standard size um, 
Yeah, so now I'm going to have all this excess. Uh, surely it'll get used, but it's still pretty annoying. I've got the, the other streets underneath, bloody annoyed, but that's the way it is. You know, you just got to work with what you got. And if I'd made my tanks two centimetres shorter, wouldn't have wasted a sheet, but then I'd probably lose about 20 litres of capacity. So it's a catch-22. You're going to lose and win uh, on a daily basis. And in this case, I'm winning, but I'm not winning. At least I had the sheet made. I didn't have to set up and, you know, I made a batch of it and I've got plenty uh, of sheets in a standby. Okay, so I've got my port water tank lid template here. I've tried this four times, but every time the bloody rattle gun starts, and I've got to stop it and start again. Sorry, guys. Well, this is my fourth go at telling you this, because every time I say something, um, the guys opposite, they've got uh, a rattle gun, a new one, and that's really loud, but it's good. Um, this water tank uh, template that I've got here, I've just taken it up in the factory and derived my water tank lid for the port side. Now it stands to reason, because it's the same profile, that if I lifted it up and sat it here where this floor um, angles are, that I would then be able to just widen it a bit and use it for the floor template, and that's what I'm gonna do. So that's gonna save me a hell of a lot of rooting around, making another template for here, and then I'm just gonna mark it so that I can move it back down for next time. This wall is exactly right, obviously, because just below it, I've got my water tank. The issue is I've got about an inch and a half over here, so if you can see here, if I put this back in place, there's my water tank. I wanna get this floor template, so I'll just simply lift it back, it up, drive it home, make sure it's fully in. Now I've got an inch or two over here that I have to worry about, and uh, all I need to do is slide it across. job done. I was just thinking how nice it is to be able to walk around at this level. I've only got a three foot climb rather than a 10 foot climb, so pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm gonna get this water tank uh, floor template out and I'm gonna put it onto my sheet, cut it, whack it in place, done. Now due to the uh, varying floor levels underneath the head, particularly under the shower, which actually drops down around an inch or so, I had this original template that came with all the moulds that I got that I'm kneeling on here. And I had to uh, then measure out where the actual bathroom, the head and the shower intersected and then cut that piece off because it is actually a lower section uh, again. So I've got three, in fact, three step levels that step down from underneath the shower unit. So I was able to cut this part off and reuse it uh, for the section on the other end above the water tank. So it took a little bit of working, a little bit of uh, figuring out, but anyway, easy done and saved me a lot of extra work. Okay, so this was the off cut of the large sheet that I made. Um, short of me going and make up another 12 
or 20 mil sheet of foam and four layers on each side. I've got this off cut here that's going to almost be suffice, except for a little corner, but the little corner will allow me to get pipe work and everything up in it. So I'm not concerned about that, but I do have to cut it off along this line here. And then the outside is going to be along this line here. So nothing's wasted here on the mould. Right, yeah, so I'm gonna give this a trim. I'm just gonna use a power saw because it's, uh, you know, the curves are that minimal. I reckon I can just do it by, by sight. But um, yeah, gearing up five or six times a day, it's a little bit of a challenge. It's uh, probably the sixth time I've had this suit on today, but it's worth it because I go home and I'm not itching other than on my forearms. It seems to be about the only place I'll get it. So I should really tape my shoulders or tape my wrists up at least. But um, you know, I'm basically gear up. Get a bit of talcum powder on my hands. Stop it getting on my my hands at least, because I get really itchy hands. I find these days. Um, the more I do it, the more it seems to get itchy. But just occupational uh, occupational hazard in this game is uh, being a bit itchy, especially when you're cutting really high end sort of composites like this, like epoxies and that. They tend to really, especially with a machine. Um, but anyway, I'm going to give this a bit of a crack. Now, the reason why it's cut on an angle here is to give me access underneath. So this should just fit in neatly here and butt up against this other sheet. Now, I will probably glass these back together once the floor is down. Um, it's a bit hard to do it all in one piece because the bulkhead has to physically be glassed to the floor. But if I jam that in under there, yeah, that's spot on. That's absolutely perfect. And, uh, you know, probably not quite structural enough yet to have a lot of traffic on it but uh, certainly the angles is strong enough to support me at the moment but you know the thing's got to last years of uh of beating in the swell and people bouncing up and down on it and uh yeah heavy traffic so for now that's certainly brilliant okay so here's the water tank lid and the floor and the floor and the crash bulkhead, or basically this side, is all now ready to give it a good sand, have a bit of a clean up, and then it's ready to flow coat. Well, that's it for another week, guys. That's uh, another video in the bag, and always a bit of relief when I get the video uploaded <laughs> and up on the platform. Um, it's interesting, as I watch the analytics of the YouTube um, channel that I have around 11,000 subscribers, 10,500, um, some videos attract more likes and dislikes than others and, and it seems to be if I go slightly off topic and, and have a you know a kayaking trip or a day out sailing I tend to get more dislikes so it's clear that my demographic is watching it for the boat building um, I hope I'm providing a little bit of an insight into my lifestyle around that you know we we have a great time Janet and I do have a great time but we also are both uh, you know virtually full-time employed and that said uh, I am currently working full time on the boat right through the winter period. It's a time that uh, is quiet with our business, so I'm able to then concentrate on the boat. Now we have got a lot of money invested in this project so far, and, uh, and it is important to realise the potential uh, finished boat at the end of the day. So that's why I've des decided to basically dedicate more and more full time uh, uh, effort into the boat. Um, that said, I've actually launched a Patreon campaign and uh, you'll notice the, the beautiful merch. I mean, this stuff, the blood, sweat, swearing and tears merch is available there on Teespring. Um, I'm typically a XL, so um, just be wary when you're ordering this stuff that you, you might want to go either one size slightly bigger because it is a slightly smaller fit. But, you know, having, like I'm actually glad I'm an XL. I'm not a double XL as I have been in the past. Uh, the work is certainly starting to uh, slim me down somewhat, which is great. But what I will say is that if you want to try to support uh, me building the boat, it's more so about the editing and the time going into producing this. This is a, a virtually a full-time job in itself. It will be around 20 to 30 hours of a week, which is uh, upsetting the balance a little bit with the boat building. But it is such a rewarding thing for me to be able to provide a video series and and for me to look back and say wow i've actually done quite a lot of work and you know for you guys it, i'm finding that uh, 
uh, the relationships I'm building with you guys out there in in the the wider world is just remarkable. I've run into people at the boat show the other day. Had so many people come up to me and recognise me, which just blew my mind. You know, I'm catching up with another guy from the states, uh, uh, Dan from the US on Wednesday night in Sydney. So you know, th those sorts of um, relationships are, are just just gold to me, and it helps me, inspires me to, to keep going forward. So the Patreon is not a sellout to commercialism. It is really a way that I'm able to put the content up there and, and, and benefit those that are prepared to, you know, chuck me a couple of bucks and buy me a coffee. And if you feel that way inclined, please feel free to uh, have a look at the Patreon campaign there. And I'm actually going to have a tier there where you're able to access um, uh, uh, videos that go off topic more so into the more the composites field, more into uh, the defining and completing a finished product, i.e. my kayaking building. And, and I think that's a good way for me to sort of differentiate the life on the hulls uh, boat build and, and get into some more detailed stuff and really highlight the sort of stuff that I love to talk about and, and you know, go into some uh, you know, more interesting stuff. So there's a couple of ways that you can help to support me. Um, just watching my videos is more than enough, but the more you can support me, the, the more I appreciate it. I consider that to be more of a tip jar, you know, just chuck me a couple of bucks for a video and, and essentially just get the benefit out of it that, you know, hopefully I can provide you. So if you'd like the video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notifications bell down there because if you do that, then you'll know exactly when I put a video up. And, uh, and I'll see you next time on Life on the Hulls, guys. Thanks for uh, watching, I appreciate it.